we we um we toured um April, May, June, finished the tour for the summer and then um you know, a few holidays, a few festivals and uh, and then back in the studio in in September we were. So um, no it's going well. We've we've um we've got quite a lot of new new ideas and um we've been recording. Uh, we've got some old songs that we had from before that we've been working on as well. And um we're gonna make a double C D. So quite a lot of music. Um and we had, we expect to have it finished by the end of May. So that's assuming everything goes well, that's when we'll, we'll be finished. <laughs> Because we had complaints from people, they said, "Why didn't you do a pre-order? Why didn't you do a special edition? Why didn't you do what you did with marbles?" And you know, and of course, we don't want to repeat ourselves and you know do the same thing again. But the, a lot of people did say it's a shame that there was no pre-order. It's a shame that it wasn't you know a special edition. So we thought, okay, we'll do it. That's what they want. We'll do it. So. And we had enough songs. We, we thought we had enough material. Um, obviously, it takes more time to make um, a double CD, but but because we already had some songs from the um, from the somewhere else recording sessions, we thought we should be okay. Yes, yes, yeah. He he's um he's settled in quite nicely working with us and um, we sort of moved on a little bit in the way we work from previously. I don't know if you know but you know most of our music is written from jamming, jam sessions that we have and, and then we'll sort of develop the musical ideas. Um, but since this session with Mike, one thing that he's been doing, which is, you know, I suppose it's quite natural really with the modern technology of digital recording, you know, using computers rather than tape. Um, it's possible to take a jam and start chopping bits around and swap things around and, and, and arrange it really without having to play anything again. Um, so what would happen is we'd jam one day, the following day we'd come into the studio and he'd say, have a listen to this. And we'd go, oh, that's good. Did we play that? And he'd say, well, yeah, you played it, but I've just messed around with it a bit, you know. So so um, that's, that's quite exciting. It keeps... Um, it keeps the the, uh, the music fresh. We don't have to keep playing it over and over again, and and um, so you have that excitement and the spontaneity of a jam, but also with some quite structured arrangements as well, which you couldn't obviously do if you were just being, you know, if you were just improvising, you know. So it's that's quite an interesting way of working. I mean, these things that he plays us—they're not finished songs, but they're a, a step further, you know. Mm -hmm. And then we'll work some more on it from there. So. So that's that's quite um, that's different, I suppose. I'm quite excited about how some of these things are turning out as well. So it'll be interesting to see where it leads in the final songs, you know. Yeah. We we did a version of um, I'm not sure who wrote it. A song called "Let It Snow," which has been recorded by people like Frank Sinatra, you know. Um, uh, we, we did our own special version, and um, <laughs> you know we always try and do something sort of slightly funny. You know, um, I don't know if you have you seen the Christmas CD no, yes. that we did. No, there's a great picture on the back here. You'll see uh, where we all, where um, the whole band looks like a, you know, the Rat Pack, Frank Sinatra, Sammy Davis Jr., and all these guys from the from the 50s. We've done a shot like that. So. <laughs> So it's, uh, but you know, we're just having a bit of fun, really. Well, according to me, yeah, okay, this is my personal point of view, um, and I'm sure the rest of the band probably won't agree with me entirely. Well, the pros are, I mean, you, you know, you, I'm sure a lot of people have this, but you work, you know, working for yourself, you don't have anybody telling you what to do, and you're doing something that you enjoy doing you know, making music and you get paid for it, that's, that's all good stuff. Um, the things I don't like, well I, I'm not a huge fan of touring, I'm, you know, I, I, <laughs> I mean this tour 
last uh, uh, tonight's the last show and we've been on tour for two weeks that's that's probably enough for me two weeks is is um, a nice length for a tour you know? <laughs> uh, but no I wouldn't want to be on tour for five six months you know? you know, the last tour we did was about three months and I'd had enough of it by the end you know so um, so I, I don't really like being away from home so much these days Well, I think um, something that we've all achieved is, is still being in a band and still making music after 20, well, in my case, 26 years. So, you know, that's that's an achievement, really. Um, you know, forget all the other stuff about, you know, gold albums and all that stuff, and where you've played and how many people you've played to or how many records you've sold. I don't think any of that stuff is so important as the fact that we have, you know, our working life has been making music and, and we've made... We're on our fifteenth album, and a, um, we've made a lot of songs. There's a few songs that I don't like, like most toys, but um, very many songs that we've made, I'm very proud of. So that's that, that's the you know what more can you want? You know, to be able to do something you love doing for for so long. Well, many other bands don't last more than a year or two. You know, so, so it's. Longevity is... Yeah, and we're all great. still friends, so that's, that's an achievement too. <laughs> mm. It was the biggest indoor show we've ever played, I think. Because it holds about 15, 16... 15, 16... 1,000. Yeah. I remember the outside of it was covered in grass. That's all I remember. <laughs> <laughs> Not the show in, in, itself? Uh, nothing. I don't that? remember a thing. No. I don't remember what it looks like inside or anything. Okay. Uh, what a pity. <laughs> it's terrible, isn't it? Yeah. My, I, I do sort of have a vague memory that it wasn't such a great show, you know? It was a big, big show, but it wasn't, it, wasn't, it wasn't as good as some of the other shows we've played in Paris. You know, all the Zenith shows that we've done. And even places like this. Um, you know, we've had we've had really good shows in Paris, but I don't remember the Bercy being one of them. It was mainly memorable for the fact that it was a big indoor show. You know. Something big like getting rid of all the nuclear weapons, maybe, or something small like George Bush falling down a hole and not getting out again. You know. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, um, no, this. It's. I'm scared about about um, what's going to happen to not not to our generation because by the time the worst effects of you know climate change are here, we'll be either very old or very dead. You know, and uh, but I've got young children, and and I'm just, that's you know what happens to them and their children and in, in, in the future, how this world's going to be, and how little everybody's doing. I just. Yeah, one thinks thing would be for people to see some sense and start trying to do something about climate change before it's too late, really. Not to mention all the terrible things that are still going on in the world. It's a big list, isn't it, really? Yeah. <laughs>